Hi, this is Sam from Teacherontis. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Masters in Health Administration program. What are different options available in Canada? How can you move to Canada or immigrate to Canada as an international student by joining a Masters in Health Administration program and then studying Health Administration, finding a job? What are the admission requirements? How much is the tuition fee? Where are these schools located? How is the geography? And what are the immigration options in those specific provinces where these university and programs are located? This is all an international student has to see, has to visualize before making this big, big decision of applying to a dental school as well as getting accepted in the dental school, moving into the new country, new province and new place to learn as well as to grow and to become a permanent resident of Canada or to start your international journey as a health administrator. So there is a lot more in this video that people have been posting all the time, asking me questions via my Instagram live or YouTube live or in YouTube video comments. So here is one video where I'm going to summarize everything that you need to know about Masters in Health Administration program for people with healthcare background or without healthcare background, whether you are a dentist, a doctor, a nurse, pharmacist, or you don't have any healthcare background and you are interested in health administration, this video will give you all the information about health administration programs in Canada. Let's just dive right into it. All right, here on the screen, the first one that I'm looking at is University of Toronto, Dalla Lena School of Public Health. So the Dalla Lena School of Public Health offers these professional degree programs. The first one is the popular one, Masters in Health Administration program. For some reason, international students love uh, applying for Masters in Health Administration in Canada. I don't know how much uh, promising the job prospects are still in the market. We will talk about that in late, uh, later in this video and the other videos, but right now I'm going to give you information of how to apply for that program, what are the requirements of that program, how much is the tuition fee, which province or place is it located and um, what could be your future outcome from this kind of program. So I'm going to dive right into the website for this health administration program and I'm going to show you step by step what I look at when I'm trying to find out information about certain program where I will apply. Uh, so for some people it's super easy uh, then this video is not for you you know everything already but for some other people they don't know these basic steps how to research for a program how to find individual requirements in that program learn more about how can I increase my chances to be accepted in that certain program and is that program fit for me or not fit for me that is also a big question that we need to ask ourselves so here MHSC health administration program I'm on the uh, De La Lina School of Public Health uh, main page and right here I'm looking at uh, a few things including the program director Tina Smith so I can I can read about um, all about the director then what is a complex uh, a comprehensive approach to meet today's complex healthcare environment if you know uh, Canada's healthcare is universal healthcare system it's all uh, operated by government federal government has all the funding and the federal government provides that funding to individual provinces and those provinces run the healthcare of that population so it's a very complex as well as amazingly run um, healthcare system in Canada. So that's why you would be learning a lot. And I don't know which country, if, for example, I'm from India and I also started with a health administration program at Dalhousie University. But this whole concept of universal healthcare was so new to me. It takes quite some time to understand these things in detail. On the left of this side, I see introduction, then I see um, uh, handbook and course information. So this section will give me some information about uh, what is going to be the curriculum, what kind of timetable they have. It's great that they have everything so transparent and upon the website that you can literally see that uh, what would you expect, like when would be your classes. So you can see there's a, our September 9th, you will have a lecture from 9 a.m. till noon. And that lecture is um, of certain subject which is HAD 5724. Now, if I go further, I will know that HAD is health administration code and then 5724 is specific code for that course. So they are telling me that this course is going to be three hours, then noon is lunch, then one to 6 p.m. is another thing and so on and so forth that we can keep on looking at all different things that are being offered. So you can see they have literally laid out 
their schedule in these simple steps right here so i think it's a very easy way to look at uh, what their schedule is so you can see this is how we will look at what kind of schedule they have and different universities have different websites different way of organizing their schedule but you can quickly have a look at okay how is my fall term looking like am i going to work during that time if they are going to keep me at school for so long how can i like how, how would i find a job which will be suitable for working in those kind of odd hours so that's the first one which is mhsc uh, health admission program now i'm going to look at degree requirements so what's the word degree requirement mean it means that in order to graduate from this program what all do you need do you need a thesis do you need a project how many uh, credits do you need to graduate from this program so it's a very good way of looking at uh, what does the question uh, program wants from me before they give me a graduation degree so it says that each course is uh, 0.5 fce um, the program requires 10 fce so each course is 0.5 and the program requires 10 FCE, which is full course equivalent FCE. That means I'm going to take 20 courses and probably some of the courses might be a little bit more credits, but this one is, uh, this program is probably asking you to take 20 courses in two years time, 10 courses per year, maybe four in the fall, four in winter, two in spring. And that's how the structure of the program should be. Other than that, there are assignments, class participation, there is a group and problem-based learning, there is practicum. So practicum is different than project and it's different than thesis. And there are a few different ways how, uh, how they can offer you a good learning experience during that program. So always remember, uh, these are all different things and think about it. What kind of person you are? Would you be interested in doing a project with certain uh, organization or office or a person? Or would you be interested in doing a practicum where you are learning something hands-on? Or would you be interested in a thesis where you do some academic research, collect some primary data or do some literature review and finally write a paper or a thesis to confirm, like to, to demonstrate your learning of certain topic, okay? So for this program, what I can see is there is a practicum requirement. So right now I don't see a thesis requirement, but they do have a practicum requirement and uh, practicum is completed full time in block three, four, five, requires minimum of eight weeks or 320 hours and equivalent to one full equivalent course. So uh, just up there, we learned that this each course is 0 0.5 so total are 10 but now we will correct that one of those fce is going to be your practicum so now you just have to take 18 more courses and another information here is the mhsc health administration program is offered on a modular basis concentrating class time into wednesday evening all day thursday friday saturday five times in a four month term or block so this is good for somebody who is already into their job. And so there are many people, for example, when I was a, an administrator, I wanted to upgrade my education so that I can apply for a higher jobs. In that case, it's easy. Uh, it's more convenient for me if uh, there is enough time given to my, uh, I can give to my work as well as to school. So this kind of schedule is great because many graduate students are already working. They, they are in some kind of a uh, career already. And these kind of programs will help me increase my position or just jump to a higher position or apply for a job for which I was not eligible for on, on without this kind of uh, degree then uh, or this kind of skills. So it's important that these programs are flexible and I can see this is quite flexible only Wednesday evenings, all day, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I think it's quite a flexible program if somebody is looking for it. After the degree requirements, I'll go into the admission requirement, which is a very important thing in order to uh, know, am I going to be accepted in this program possibly, or there's not even a chance. So what they are looking for, they are looking for academic performance. So they are looking for an uh, highest academic standing equivalent of B plus. So they say this thing, but it's more mostly for North American education system. If you are an international student, then you would have to check like uh, what does WES or ECC equivalency 
talk uh, say about your degree and still even if you think for example the university where i was studying in india they would never give us a very high score so our our class aggregate or the class average would be 65 percent or less than 70 percent all the time and in canada less than 70 is fail so it's such a difference in different grading systems so don't worry too much that oh these are asking b plus i don't have b plus i cannot apply for this program Always uh, uh, either follow the ECC or WES evaluation or actually go ahead, spend that $100 for the application fee and send your application, but do not blindly uh, give up because there is a high uh, academic standing requirement for that university because that is mostly for how they see their North American standards. They do not always know what's happening in other part of the world. So you need this kind of uh, grade equivalent. They also need some experience. In most cases, the applicants have minimum three years of relevant clinical or management experience following undergraduate degree. So they are uh, like, for example, many people who are asking me this question are dentists. So they are looking for somebody who has a degree, like an undergraduate degree, which probably you have as a dentist or as a doctor or as a pharmacist, nurse in your home country. They are also looking for minimum three years of a clinical or management experience. And remember when you are applying for it, your experience should not just say that, for example, if I was a dentist and I want to apply here, I would not say I'm just, I'm a dentist. I am very good at root canal treatments and restorating fillings and doing this stuff. No, they want to know as an administrator, what were my leadership? How were my leadership skills? How did I learn new things? How did I make everything go smooth? How How is my process improvement skill like how can i make things easier and how can i uh, control a staff or manage a staff in a very efficient way and make sure that people around me are in a positive feeling and they are efficient and they are they are uh, respecting the the overall flow and career and their time and the efficiency is great so there are so many things that you want to highlight when it comes to the clinical and management experience. The next one is going to be references. So references are very important when you apply to North American schools. So they want to know uh, one from your colleague should be okay, but there should be one from the supervisor. There should be some for some from senior leaders. For example, I work at Nova Scotia Community College and if I know the Dean of School of Access, then I would ask her to write me a, a letter so that that would come as a very, very nice accolade on my profile that the dean is actually recommending me for this certain program. So wherever you are, never just put three friends of yours in the references. One should be from your instructor, at least if not one, then two is even better. And uh, one should be from somebody in a good position related to the program where you're applying for. So that's another skill. And last is motivation. The faculty has a high premium on candidates who have strong motivation and can ensure ongoing commitment throughout the program. Motivation is evaluated through an applicant's clear letter of intent and through admission review process. So all they are trying to say is the letter of intent that you will provide should give us an information of how motivated you are to apply for this program, to perform well, to, to deliver all the assessments, to learn and to, to be like, you know, just a person who's not gonna give up so easily. For example, I was, I, I started a health administration program thinking a complete different uh, picture of the whole program. But once I got into the setting, I did not enjoy one bit of it. I thought like, this is not where I belong. This is absolutely opposite of where I belong. So that's why they, they want you to write that kind of letter to find out what is your motivation to come for this program, how much you are prepared, how much you know about this program and how good you would perform as a career as well as in education or in academics. So they have a uh, application review. They also have an interview, which is one and a half hour component of this. So you can go through it and make sure you are solid prepared for the interview. And the final assessment is done with the academic uh, admission committee. So that's all for uh, when we talk about the admission requirements. Let's look at uh, one more thing. 
you can, uh, when you are writing your letter, when you are researching the program, you can go here and see what the other alumni are doing or have done. So they would always uh, write at least a few of their favorite alumni who have done something great and they, they want to keep them as a showcase alumni of their school. So you can read their bio, you can learn what kind of job they ended up in. And after that, this is a graduate student achievement. So uh, this, these kind of statistics give you a number approximately do not count it 100%. So it says job placement rate 94 to 100% three months post program completion. Now, most of the business schools as well as health administration schools will give you this kind of numbers and they are true. But do not put yourself in that 100% list automatically. It, yes, you. it's very likely that you will get a very good position after that, but you have to give a lot of input and a lot of passion towards that career, not thinking, for example, if you're a dentist and you're thinking that I'll do MHA, I'll move to Canada, I'll get my permanent residence, and after that, I will go back to dentistry. Just having this thought in your brain is going to completely withdraw you from uh, that overall learning and participation in the health administration program, which might uh, not allow you to perform the best. So those who are just thinking of um, health administration career as a stepping stone, I would say it's not a stepping stone. It's a very, very big uh, program and a big decision of your life. So job of 100% is not always guaranteed. It all depends on how you perform and how you deliver in that program. Another important thing to look at is, uh, so they say oh, in past five years, the job placement has been from 94 to 100%. More than half of the graduates were employed in hospital sector. So you will be working in hospitals, including in acute care, rehabilitation, uh, complex continuing care, specialty or healthcare programs. The second largest employer were government and government related agencies such as local health integration networks, the regional health authorities responsible for planning, funding, integrating, healthcare services in Ontario. So that's so that's a very impressive way of looking at the program. So yes, the program is impressive. Now we have to think about ourselves. If we do this program, what kind of job are we going to end up doing? So let's click on the job opportunities uh, column and see what is posted here. So these are all the jobs that are posted for students as well as alumni. There is an improvement consultant for the uh, Michael Garin Hospital. There is a research manager at Knowledge Translation Program, which is uh, Unity Health in Toronto. Then there is a research coordinator too, which is again for Knowledge Transla uh, Translation Program at St. Michael's Hospital. Uh, there is a research associate program. There is a part-time casual research assistant, which is which is something that most of the students end up finding in the first few months, which they say that it's a 100% placement. Anyways, uh, there are many other pro uh, positions that you will be eligible to apply for. It does not mean you will get this job, you'll be eligible to apply for. And uh, it's, a, it's going to be a big classroom, so you will be competing with all other students uh, uh, like just to find that perfect position for yourself. So this is another good way of looking at how do I find out the jobs that I want um, after I graduate from this program, what kind of jobs would I get? And last is applying to the MHSE program. So, so how would you apply for this program? So they have an uh, SGS slate application system. So you will go there, you will sign in as the first time user. If this is the first time you are doing, then create an account and start your application. If this is not the first time, then you can go as a continuing uh, applicant. And once you apply, then to see your status, to upload other supporting documents, you will always go through this other returning user tab right here. If you are thinking that is this school going to give me a three year of postgraduate work permit answer is 100%. Yes, this is the most reputable school in Canada and all the programs that I'm going to talk about, they all will definitely give you a three year postgraduate work permit eligibility. Lastly, let's look at the tuition fees. So I'm here at the tuition fee tab. You can follow along and the tuition fee for the MHSC program right here for domestic students is $10,000. For international student, it's going to be $40,000 approximately. And it says international student must pay international student fee unless they are Canadian citizen, permanent residents, or they qualify for status in Canada by definition of the student account. Don't worry about it. But all I'm trying to say is, as an international student, this is the tuition fee that you are going to pay for full-time annual. So that's one year. So you are going to pay $80,000 for two years program. 
So that is all for the University of Toronto, Della Lena School of Public Health, Masters in Sciences in Health Administration program. Let's go to the number two program uh, in my video, which is going to be Dalhousie University. <laughs> The Dalhousie University MHA program, this is how I got into Canada in very first place in 2014. And uh, I had to leave this program after the first term because I knew this is not cut for me. After that, I, I went ahead for Nova Scotia Community College, did a uh, certificate program there, then went to Mount St. Vincent University, completed a master's in education program. I did not complete it. I did not write a thesis. And then I'm in dental school right now. I did work for seven years so far but uh, from all that applying and reapplying process this is these are the things that i have learned that i'm willing to share with you right here all right so here's the website for dalhousie health administration program and uh, i would say it's a very solid very uh, very respectable program in the province of nova scotia and around it and uh, you can you have a few outstanding features to the, uh, so the first one they say is uh, outstanding learning experience, 25 students in a cohort and a personal academic advisor. So they are talking about a small classroom size, which is a very big thing, but you know everybody very well. So it has pros as well as cons. Then the next is CAHME accreditation. Now this is an accreditation for all health care managers. So this is something very important when you are applying to different uh, big organizations or places where they really need you to be accredited by CAHME then uh, this program is going to offer you that thing. Then there is also a four month residency, which is a very solid highlight. I think my selling point was this four month residency. Some places pay you, some places don't even pay you, but still working at a place for four months make you solid experience enough in that organization that you can crack in a permanent job in that place only if you enjoy working there if you don't enjoy working there then probably you'll look for other options but you already have a four months of solid canadian experience in your hand when you complete this program there is also some uh, mentoring scheme, some international uh, interprofessional health education, which even as a dentist, we are also part of. And uh, there is also Nova Scotia Advantage, which is uh, you learn, live and grow in Halifax, Nova Scotia, the best city uh, with a beautiful ocean and a world-class university to call home. So all great things in this uh, health administration program. Now let's just scroll down further on this page to find out a few more things click here if you are ready to apply click right here if you have questions you send questions here we will look at the admission requirements for this program so what are going to be the admission requirements all candidate must satisfy general requirements for, by the faculty of graduate studies so faculty of dalhousie university uh, there is undergrad programs and there is faculty of graduate studies so in faculty of graduate studies uh, they say that a four-year bachelor degree with honors or equivalent is must when you apply for a graduate program so there might be many of you who have done a three-year program for example a bsc in biology or an uh, bsc in chemistry then suddenly this becomes a trick for you that you do not have a four-year degree but those who are from healthcare background and they have done a four-year program which includes everyone including a dentist doctor physiotherapist uh, nursing all those degree careers pharmacists who have a four-year degree program uh, you all will be eligible right away for this kind of uh, graduate program at Dalhousie University. After that, they ask us that they need original transcripts and uh, a B plus average. So as I said, do not trust your, do not just give up on a B plus average thing because once you apply, they will look at your complete profile. They'll also see that in past from this university, how many people had a very low GPA. Probably that's what it's happening like this, that university is not very lenient in giving away grades. So they do all that kind of evaluation. So never stop yourself from applying somewhere just by looking at this B plus average Great. Then uh, at least two academic letters of references. So earlier we saw three for University of Toronto. It's two here. Then resume or CV, a career statement, which is the one of the most important tools when you are applying for any graduate program is your statement of purpose or career statement. And uh, GMAT score. That's one big one which was not there in MHSC program because MHSC program is a science based program while Masters of Health Administration program will always be just like business administration program. They have some statistics, they have some advanced courses, so they want you to be aware of the GMAT process or they also accept GRE score as well. 
which is not written on the website i'm surprised because i never gave gmat i only gave gre uh, and i was accepted in that with the score of 320 out of 340 at that time so uh, anyways gmat score is must so if you are interested in preparing for gmat only then you will be interested in this particular program for students inter uh, interested in pursuing a JD MHA program, only LSAT is required. So JD and MHA program is a combination of law, health law with health administration. Too much for somebody uh, as an international student who would want to immigrate here. So just ignore that completely. For international students, a proof of uh, language proficiency is must. And then you complete the uh, complete the form, and there is much more about the application procedure which you can find here by clicking on this link of Faculty of Graduate Studies. You will again create a uh, create your account and take it from there. Let's look at the program structure. There is going to be two year program. In the first year, you will have fall and winter term. You will do five courses per term, and right after that, when the summer arrives, you are doing a four month summer residency, which is amazing like this is the only big selling program for a person like me because i'm not interested in writing a thesis i'm interested in actually working somewhere so that i can get some experience which i can write on my resume which i can communicate with somebody that this is how i worked in canada no matter what i have done outside canada and uh, this is a great tool so this four month summer residency is critical and after that in the second year you will also have uh, again fall term as well as winter term Degree requirements are uh, completion of 51 credit hours, including the residency. What are the courses? So just this is also a very good thing to have a look at what kind of courses I'm going gonna learn. And uh, do you find these interesting? Do you think this is what you want to learn? Some people have a complete different uh, definition of health administration in their brain. And they are like, no, 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 no. Why are you making me teach? Why are you making me go through all these things? And uh, this is not what I expected when I applied for this health administration program, for example, me. So I highly recommend going through each of these courses and just try to learn are you a person who would enjoy the financial accounting governance management uh, in healthcare management control in healthcare and uh, if you think this is a course that you are not sure about go on youtube go on udemy or coursera or other websites and try to look up this title and see what you see there can you learn it would you enjoy doing this is this something that you would be successful at or it's a good way to learn what are the courses offered in that program. Also, there is a thesis option, just like uh, the Juris Doctor, which is health law combination with uh, health administration program. So if uh, just like that one, you also have a thesis option if you are interested in writing a thesis and they are talking about CA, HME accreditation. That's all about Dell's MHA program. Let's quickly look at how much are we going to spend if we get admission in this program. So let's learn how much am I going to spend? Like what is the cost of this program? So it's not written right here. It's always all over places. As I said, you have to learn how to read a university's website in order to find information. And it's right here in the program cost. So I'm gonna click here. And uh, another funny thing, they would take me to another place, which is Money Matters, where I find out everything about uh, financial related things in Dalhousie University. So I click here and then I say, I want to find out the tuition and estimate. So they will say, okay, click by the fee calculator or there is also an option to click by the program class. So if you go ahead and click using the fee calculator and you'll say, no, I'm an international student and I'm studying a graduate program and that graduate program is health administration, which is right here. And then you'll say, how many course loaded are you planning? So 555 is right here. And then say next. And then um, are you going to stay in residence or not? For now, I'm going to say no. I'm going to stay off campus. I don't want residence fees to be included here. And I do not want a meal plan. I'm hoping that I would cook my own food in my little shared room apartment as an international student. I don't know. If you want, you can include that as well. And you finish it and it says that your annual for one year annual cost is going to be $35,000 $35, approximately. So for two years, it's going to be $70,000. A little shy of what uh, University of Toronto MHSC program was, but that's how the MHA program in Dalhousie University, Nova Scotia is going to be. The only plus side 
Another plus side I would say other than the four year four month residency is going to be being able to get permanent residence in Nova Scotia very quickly while in Toronto it will be a very tricky business because uh, there is not much of the provincial nomination going on in Ontario but in Nova Scotia and in maritime provinces they are trying to bring more immigrants here so that's the, again another upper upper hand on the Laos University MHA program let's jump into the next program the third program that I recommend in Canada for health administration is the Masters in Health Administration program in UBC, University of British Columbia. Now, if you are wondering why would I not keep it about Dalhousie University at the second place, the reason is because of the close immigration in British Columbia and there is no provincial nomination support at all for international students. So everybody is applying for the federal skill program or federal uh, immigration programs, which is very competitive. So it does not give you an upper give you an advantage of uh, moving to Canada as an immigrant applying at the UBC but British Columbia is the best place in uh, in Canada to live at I want to live at Vancouver if I get a chance and this university is located right in the heart of Vancouver city which is one of the most beautiful cities in North America but still the chances of immigration goes way 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 down compared to if you do a program from Dell or from University of Toronto even would have a higher chance compared to this one but let's learn about masters in health administration program at UBC so uh, again highlights of the program it's a 24 month professional program for clinician managers researchers who are seeking solution in today's complex health delivery issues a uh, few things that they throw up on top of their website is combining health systems policies and management our unique curriculum offers educational and professional foundations required for leadership in healthcare our weekend modular format allows you to study while continuing to build your career with our compressed schedule you attend class every three to four weeks which is awesome if you are going to work in Canada and you want to take it slow and you want to learn on your own pace and you want to do some part-time jobs or another career so that's a great schedule just like University of Toronto has a very good schedule UBC also have a great schedule right here and uh, there are four options that I am going to talk about anyway admission requirement program details and career outcomes so let's look at the admission requirements which is our number one favorite uh, so for application for 2022, that's uh, November 1st, 2021 when it's open. So if you are thinking of 2023, you will apply this year in November. And uh, uh, it will talk about applica applicants from Canada and US while applicants from, uh, from with international credentials, which will be the international student mostly watching this video right now. So applicants with international credentials should have high academic background and meet uh, minimum requirements as I said again so they have a list based on you know uh, your country of origin what are the requirements they are looking for uh, GPA is again based on your academic requirement the language is IELTS IELTS or TOEFL so you can uh, provide either of those two language tests and for IELTS 7 is the minimum uh, score and TOEFL 100 is the minimum score Quantitative, uh, quantitative skills is uh, evaluated using GRE. So GRE is there, but there is also GMAT is accepted, just like Dalhousie University did not put GRE on their website, but if you email them, they'll say, yes, we accept GRE. Similarly, UBC does accept GMAT. If you will email them, they'll let you know that, yes, we accept GMAT. We are in, in lieu of GRE. So uh, they just want to look at your cognitive, like your mathematical skills when it comes to GRE. And it's very important that if you have not performed well in GRE or GMAT and you are still getting accepted, I would say think twice because that that GRE GMAT really tests you how your analytical and quantitative skills are. But these programs take it to another level. And uh, I think I think it's if the school is not accepting you based on your GRE or GMAT score, thank them. Say thank you for recognizing that I'm not still there. I might need more practice or more, more skill upgrade. Over here, they say for GRE and other tests, the minimum requirement is a 50th percentile or above on both verbal and quantitative, as well as the minimum requirement for GMAT right here. See, bingo, I got it right there. So minimum requirement for GMAT 
is 550 or overall and above 50th percentile again. So these are all the admission requirements. How would you apply? By clicking here, apply now. And they have admission cycle for international student intake uh, for fall 2022. February 1st was the application deadline and admission decisions are made by April. So if you're applying for 2023, then before February 1st, everything, including your documents, your uh, transcripts, everything should be uh, there before February 1st. One thing I really liked was these FAQs, which give you a very thorough information. All the questions that you can think of, these questions are answered in these FAQs. How many people have got jobs in past? How long should my letter of intent be? Can I change my referee after the applicant has application has been submitted? Do you have a wait list? And uh, if I have been refused for the admission, how can I get feedback on my application? All these questions they have just put together, which is a very, very good and interactive way for the school. So that's a, quite some information about uh, the admission requirement. When it comes to program detail, it is similar to how other programs are. Don't think that one program would be way different than other programs. It's just the schedule is arranged different. They have 24 courses, so each is 1.5 credit. So that makes the total program to be 42 credit graduate degree program. And that's all you need to know. And students also complete an independent capstone project. So similar, uh, remember I said there would be either a practicum, there would be either a, a research project or a capstone project, there would be a thesis and there can be a work placement. So work placement was a four month residency, which was given by Dalhousie University MHA program. While this one gives you a capstone project, which you can actually use it as a work experience, but not all the time. Sometimes you don't even end up getting uh, a good organization or a person who would supervise you for a capstone project. Then you end up doing a literature review, which is like, I find it, I find, I do not find it useful uh, career wise. I find it good for academicians, like for people who want to work in universities, but not when it comes to getting a job. That's a hardcore truth, right? <laughs> you need work experience to get more work experience. So here they have given a nice overview of what are the MHA outcomes after the MHA program. 450 people have been graduated. Where do their alumni work in? Uh, clinic care, health informatics, healthcare management, education, research, project management, human resources, and many other places. What is the most valuable experience is cohort learning, which is actually very important. Uh, and international students do struggle with cohort learning because uh, many schools in India, especially those coming from healthcare background, we do not have a lot of cohort hot learning environment there but here like a uh, peer evaluation is there so your peers are going to evaluate you on how did you perform in that particular small project or a class work that you did there is a diversity which is amazing the more diverse background you have in your classroom the more kind of experience they get to share with you and the more you learn from it and there is also networking and career development also the skills gained are leadership skills data management health economics operation management program evaluation and all so that's a lot of information. The last thing that I know you are waiting for is how much is the tuition fee? How much is it going to cost me to become, uh, uh, to get a master's in health administration degree at UBC? And to find that tuition fee for MHA program, I would have to go to the graduate school again, uh, just to find out how much is the tuition fee. And I will see that right here is the master's in health administration program. So this is the MHA website on the graduate studies uh, page. And that's where they write that the tuition for the first year is $15,500 for domestic students and some $27,000 for international students. So once again, what are the highlights? The highlight is the tuition fee is less compared to UB, uh, University of Toronto and Dalhousie University. Uh, it's a way highly reputed university and the Vancouver city is amazing. British Columbia is great, but the option of getting a permanent residence is lower because it's in British Columbia, because you might have to end up finding a job somewhere else in order to apply for PR, or you have to just uh, take your chances to get into the federal skill programs and uh, federal immigration programs, not the provincial ones. 
So the number fourth is going to be Tefler School of Management in Ottawa, which is in Ontario, which is also capital city of Canada. And the Tefler School of Management offers this master's in health administration program. There is also an executive health administration program. Ignore that one, not meant for international grads. Uh, just go for the master's in health administration program for now. And we'll follow along the sequence of MHA programs that we have created. And here is the website for that particular school and uh, the health administration program. Uh, we can download the package, I'm not interested. We can schedule a meeting with an advisor if you are interested for. Um, I will just quickly come here where it says that we offer a 24 months program with evening and weekend courses to suit the working professional. The program is built in three components which has the learn management fundamentals, learn healthcare fundamentals, and then exper uh, experiential, experiential learning using uh, residency or a field project. So what are the cool highlights of this program? Tefler MHA is the only MHA in the Canada uh, housing school of management, the Tefler and the only management school of Ontario with triple crown international accreditations of whatever they have. And then one of Canada's most established MHA program, the content is enhanced with input from executives in residence. And our thesis uh, based master's in health system program is also going to be um, a part of like you know uh, research in there so let's learn about the program so i'm right here clicking on the left side right here program and it says all teflar mha students quickly find meaningful rewarding jobs after graduation that's their highlight every time the reason behind their immediate career success is straightforward the teflar mha provides our graduate with solid grounding key areas of business management prepares them to tackle challenges inherent in modern healthcare system and give them all the skills that they need. There's also residency and there's also field project. So they have all cool things that we learn for other programs as well. And so when I'm in the program, I'll just click down here, the program delivery. So I should know that uh, the MHA program is ideal choice for experienced working professionals who wish to enhance their skills quickly and thoroughly. So this is a very good highlight in one line that you should be a experienced health professional or you should be already in some kind of uh, capacity where you would get, just increase the level of your healthcare administration knowledge, not get it from the basic. And as a professional student, you will complete the program coursework and the in-person residency or project-based residency in only 24 months. So like all other programs, this is also 24 months or within two years, it's gonna be completed. Delivery is very flexible. The working professionals will attend classes two evenings a week and three weekends per term. So that's pretty interesting how their delivery of the format is. There is some information right here for the residency or the field project. And I'll straight jump to the admission part, which is something everybody struggles with most of the time. So they have the similar kind of requirement, the minimum average of 70% or B. So again, I will ask you not to trust what they are saying, but send your doc documents in, send your transcripts with evaluation and let them make a decision based on that. A minimum of three years full-time work uh, experience is required. In general, the preference is given to those who have great work experience particularly when there is evidence of career progression so this is very important for new grads fresh grads that if you are thinking that hey i just want to move to canada so i'm just going to do another program there these kind of programs are not meant for fresh grads they they want you to bring a lot of experience on the table because they have a cohort system they are learning in a classroom among uh, between each other like there's uh, their exchange of uh, their own experiential learning so they want somebody to have some experience when they show up in this program not somebody who's a fresh grad 24 year old without any experience in any kind of uh, discipline other than their own core so just remember this thing it's a good highlight how the program is giving you a green flag that uh, please apply only when you have this kind of uh, requirement met uh, if you have over seven years of experience, discover the online executive MHA program. Even when you have over seven year experience, uh, this MHA program is expensive, very, very high quality, very focused on high level administration and like philosophies in healthcare administration and like the big picture and how can you transform the whole system. And there would be like in your class, you would have like, you know, the people who are director of this wing and uh, they are CFO of the health information network and stuff like that. So it's a very fancy outcome. So I, I never 
like I see it, but I, I hope, I wish someday I would apply for this kind of program, but not for international grads there. And uh, you uh, achieve a minimum of 75% in the required Harvard modules as indicated below. For international applicants, Harvard online math module is right here. So that's another way of assessing your quantitative skills just like GRE, GMAT, uh, assess your mathematics skill. This Harvard module right here is another way you can get your mathematical skills assessed. So you will just create your account here and then you will go ahead and uh, complete the mathematical skills. You will know where you stand once you start working on it. But if you have prepared for GRE or GMAT like I did, then you will find it similar to what they were asking for. Similarly, there's a communication module, just like uh, the IELTS and TOEFL. This Harvard communication model is also a very important tool, how you can actually, and these are paid, so these are uh, not free. So uh, when you apply for it, that's when you will make a final decision of uh, completing these two modules. So right here is another tab which talks about the application process and deadline. So make sure you go through it. The application deadline for international students is again February 1st, just like other programs. So make sure you apply before that. And what are the mandatory admission tests? So Harvard modules are compulsory, Harvard math or Harvard math as well as communication module. But if you choose not to do these two modules, then you will have to provide a GMAT or GRE score. So right here on the top, they say the MHA program requires submission of successful completion of certificates in the Harvard modules or so it says or a complete co uh, competitive score in GMAT or GRE exam. So either if you have already done GRE, GMAT, then you don't have to worry about uh, the Harvard modules, but if you have not done so, then I would go ahead and do the Harvard modules instead of GR. GR is like $350, GMAT is like more than that. Then why to waste so much money if you can get it done within 100 USD? Okay. And lastly, we will go into the tuition fee tab right here and see what how much is the tuition fee. And we can find out the detail about the fee right here in this tab, but for those who are uh, international students for the complete program this is the least expensive program uh, between all that we discussed so far which is around fifty five thousand five hundred uh, dollars for international students so the fifth one that I'm going to talk about is Ted Rogers uh, School of Management at Ryerson University and this is a master's in health administration program in community care so this program is again a full-time two-year program. So this program addresses the need for innovative and entrepreneurial managers who can effectively and ethically lead, manage, and start organizations that deliver care across diverse population and location. The program is located in downtown area of the city and the modular format enables students to work full-time while completing the program in 16 months. So that's the amazing thing that this program can be completed in 16 months, but that's not something that as an international student you are looking forward to. Because uh, if the pro if, even if accidentally the letter of offering write this thing that your program will be covered and uh, finished in 16 months, then the CSE will not give you a work permit for three years. The work permit has to be given for three years when the program is completed in two years or more than two years. So that's a very uh, big highlight. So when if you get accepted in this program, then you will ask them for a letter to confirm this thing that this is a two year program. This is a very big thing for international students because uh, if you complete a two year program, then only you get a three year of postgraduate work permit. But if you complete the program in 16 months, right? Uh, let's see, uh, I, will, I will try to find more details right here. So admission requirement, uh, program structure program structure right here so uh, the program structure you can see there will be a fall term then there is going to be a winter term then there is going to be a spring term and another fall term and you complete the program if you if this kind of structure is provided to the CSE then the chances are for, for a student visa then the chances are you will only get a one year of postgraduate work permit so that's the only downside I see here this program is amazing for people who live in Canada and just want to get into uh, want to complete this program right away if I want if I'm a dentist and I want to complete a health administration program then actually I would prefer this program over any other program because it gives me uh, the degree of my choice the the outcome of my choice in the shortest amount of time but that's not always suitable for international students. So just make sure that you look into this part before you apply here. The positive side is 
uh, it is going to be uh, cheaper than all other programs. The tuition fee is less than all other programs that we have seen so far. So let's not jump into it. Admission requirement, again, the GPA, statement of purpose, resume, and minimum two years of work experience in healthcare in Canada is what they have thrown out there. So this will actually take you away from, uh, like this is actually something that only if they do not find enough students, then they will accept an international student without healthcare experience in Canada. And the reason being, it's a unique healthcare system. The universal healthcare system is unique to Canada. Like there are other, universal, other countries which have uh, universal healthcare, but Canada has like 100 person uh, universal healthcare, which is which is not very common. So uh, they want somebody to have a Canadian work experience before you start work um, for this program. Then they need all other requirements. There may be an interview. Uh, you can check your application deadline right here on this tab here. And uh, the tuition fee, as I said, is going to be the cheapest of them all because it is going to be approximately uh, right here on this website. Health administration for international student is 25,000 per year. So that makes it like uh, 50,000 something uh, for two years. So that's not too bad. And then there is a curricular research, there is faculty, um, like you will be working in among these uh, core community related problems in healthcare that this university is trying to focus on. So you can see how it's different from many other programs where we are trying to improve the overall, overall hospital acute care facilities, health administration, hospital administration, while in this one we are working more in promoting the healthy aging population, addiction and chronic illness, family and paid caregiver, mental health issues, pediatric care. So they are actually more uh, community focused compared to other health administration programs. So you, I just showed you what the program structure is going to be like. You will be starting in the first fall and you'll be done before the winter comes. So it's pretty amazing. And uh, there is tons of information on this website uh, as, as posted in the link below right here. So that's all about this number fifth program. Last one is the health administration program at University of Montreal, which is a French program. So I, I can show you what on screen right here. Uh, I can translate it. If you see it right here, it would say that you can translate this to English or to French. But if you have a good French skill and you would want to learn in French, then this is a great program because uh, your immigration is going to be very solid, high chances to get a job. You will have a very good chance as well as this program is not too expensive. The overall cost of this program for two years is going to be uh, less than $30,000, which is amazing. This is going to be the cheapest program you can find. French always have a good funding available for their health education system. So you can go through this program choice. I know not many people I know personally would have a French requirement met, but if this is a program of your choice, then this is going to be the sixth program that I recommend for masters in health administration in Canada. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have more questions about the MHA programs then post it down in the description below. Uh, in next video, I will talk about public health as well as MBA in healthcare options. So if you are interested in those two, please let me know in the comment, would you like me to do the next video on public health programs in Canada or MBA in healthcare in Canada? And if yes, then please post in the comment below so that I know, yes, you are looking forward for this information. And also let me know what information did I not cover? What else would you like to know about uh, these schools and these programs? I'll be happy to uh, do another video where I'll explain it further in more details but for now thank you so much for watching this entire video and uh, make sure you like this video share with at least one friend who is in the same cycle like you and subscribe to my channel bye